Hey there fellow marketers, Professor Walters here and today we're here in Vicenza, Italy to talk about the differences between business to business marketing and business to consumer marketing. Some of the basic differences out there. And the first difference I want to talk about is actually kind of the relationship that companies have with their clients when it comes to B2C marketing versus B2B marketing. So in a business to consumer marketing, when so when Coke is selling you, the individual, a can of Coke, you kind of get impersonal communication, right? They kind of mass market their products to anybody and everybody that might want to have a Coke. It's not like they say, hey, Mark, this Coke's for you. Yes, I know they have the cans and the bottles that say your name on it. So they're trying. But in general, you have very impersonal communication, a lot of electronic communication, and no one really feels too special in that B2C world. Now in the B2B world, the relationship's a little different, okay? In the B2B world, it's very important to have really tight relationships with your clients. So you're building these one-on-one -on -one relationships. You're making sure they're getting the personal connections. You're, you're sending them the birthday cards. You're calling them to let them know, congratulations on that promotion, because relationships becomes much more important in the B2B world than the B2C world. And the reason that is, we're going to go into the second topic, and that is the number of clients out there and how much they purchase. Think about it. In the B2C world, how many Coca-Colas do you buy a day, a month, a year? One a day, maybe six a week, maybe, you know, 50 a year? Well, how many does Walmart buy? 50,000 a week, you know, kind of stuff? It's a very different kind of relationship there. Because in B2C, we have tons and tons of customers, but they buy very, very small amounts. Whereas in the B2B world, we have very few customers, but they buy huge orders. I mean, think about it. If I'm selling jet engines, right? There's only a few companies out there that sell them. So I got to make sure I have that good relationship with them because there's not too many other people I could possibly sell to. And when they do order, they order, you know, 10 to 20 to 30 planes at a time where I'm not sure how many planes you're ordering, but I'm not ordering any planes recently, okay? So we're kind of looking at those kind of things. Now, the next thing we look at is kind of like the demand of product and services. Now, in the B2C market, people realize I'm hungry, I'm gonna go buy something now to eat it, right? And so they know that, so they'll go and buy it. That's why it's a lot easier to influence individuals in a B2C world than a B2B customer. Because if you're hungry, you can make a decision. Whereas in the B2B world, your demand is not necessarily because you're hungry. Your demand in the B2B world is more, hey, we're planning on selling a million cars this year, so we need four million tires for those million cars. It doesn't matter if you give me a deal, I still need four million cars because we're gonna be building this many cars. And the thing is, is understanding demand in the B2C world, I just have to understand the end customer's demand. But in B2B, I have to understand if I'm selling like, Coca-Cola to Walmart, I have to understand what Walmart's demand for Coca-Cola is going to be, but also what the demand for the end customer is for Coca-Cola, for the end customer for Walmart. And so there's a lot more stuff you need to know in, tor in terms of understanding supply and demand when it comes to the B2B versus B2C market. So the next thing I want to focus on is geographic location. Basically, where do you need to be if you're going to be working the B2C market or the B2B market? Well, in the B2C market, I mean, you can be based in Atlanta and sell Coke all around the world. You can be based in California and sell iPhones all over the world. Because in B2C, you don't have to be where the customers are. Because there's so many of them that I need to be everywhere. So I can be wherever I want. Now, this is different in the B2B world. In the B2B world, you have to be where the customers are. So that's why if you want to be in the movie industry, well, you got to go live in Hollywood, right? If you want to work in the investment banking industry or, or venture capital, you got to be out in San Francisco, right? You have to think about these things. Oh, I want to play at the West End and be a, an actor there. Well, you got to go to London to be on the West End. You have to be there for that, okay? And that's why it's really important to know where is this industry really located? That's where our company needs to be because those relationships become much more important. I need to make sure that you can show up my office today, not give me a call and say I'll be there in a few days. No, no. B2B, it's really important because the size of the orders that you're there where the client is. Now, the next thing I want to look at is actually supply chain complexity. So how complex is the supply chain going to be to get our product to the customer? Now, in the B2B world, a lot of times it's a lot easier because sometimes your clients say, I want you to ship it straight to our stores or ship it straight to our warehouses. And that's what you do. So you make your product and you ship it directly to them. So there's nobody in the middle. There's no middleman. There's no wholesaler. There's no retailer. It's just me to you. So it's almost a one-stop supply chain. Whereas you think about it, 
for me to get my phone here, I got my Samsung phone here. Let's say it's made in Korea, okay? So it's made in Korea, then it has to go from the factory to the boat, and then it has to go on the boat to LA, then it gets out of the port of LA, and then it gets in a train, from there it goes across the country, then gets to a, a truck, and then at the truck in Indianapolis gets and drives it to Chicago and drops it off there. There's a lot more steps in the supply chain in the B2C world, and that means there's a lot more problems that can happen because their supply chain's a lot more complicated than the B2B. Now, it's not always the case, but most of the time, that is one of the big issues you have. And then you look at the complexity of the buying situation. If I'm hungry, I make the decision, I go eat. That's a business to consumer thing. It's very simple. I can inspire people. I always love when I talk about a restaurant in class for like an hour and a half, and I'll use Culver's as the same example, and then I'll go to Culver's after class. Boom, there's gonna be a student there, okay? Or maybe I'll talk about McDonald's, bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, and how the cheese oozing off the side and the bacon and mixed together is so wonderful with the sweet tea. Now imagine it's eight o'clock in the morning, you haven't had breakfast. You're thinking, I want a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. And boom, I will see students there. No problem. Because you can really inspire people in the B2C market to get them to want to have demand, like I said before, but also they can make that decision on their own. It's not very complex. It's usually just one person making that decision. Whereas when you go to the B2B side, there's a lot more people involved. It's kind of like if you're trying to order pizza with 10 other friends, it takes forever to figure out what we're gonna have. Well, she needs gluten-free and he hates pork, but he loves extra cheese and we gotta figure all these things out. Well, think about it in the B2B sense. Well, we gotta talk to accounting if they're okay with this. We gotta talk to finance if they're okay with this. And what did marketing say about the new website? You have all these other people that get involved in the decision-making process, so it takes a lot longer to get things done. So you're not gonna be able to inspire a bunch of last-minute sales in the B2B world. The B2C world, yeah, you can, but B2B, no. It takes a lot more people involved and it gets a lot more complicated. So I hope this helps you understand a bit better the differences between the B2B and B2C markets. And the thing is, we have another video out there that really goes into depth of what does this really mean for companies to kind of help you understand a bit more. So I hope this does help you out. If you like marketing videos like this, please give us a like and hit that subscription button. Also hit the bell, we put out new marketing and business videos usually a couple times a week. And we hope it helps you if you're studying for an exam or just trying to understand business a bit better. I hope we can help you out because we wanna help you on your journey, wherever that journey is, running your own business or getting an A on exam. I hope this helps you out. So I'll say bye from Vicenza.